Okay, so it's time to start the afternoon session. So this afternoon, we would like to start the afternoon session with the keynote speech from um, Professor Yoki. And he is the one who went around the Asian countries and recruited um, the students. So um, he will talk about our program in a perspective of uh, Asian networks and why we try that and uh, some of the outcomes of that as, a, as our keynote speech. And it, it will be an introduction to the presentations following that. And the presentations are from these universities. Oh, we're missing one, but yeah, it's going to be from, uh, from six universities, including KO universities. So I will give it to Yoki Sensei. So good afternoon, everybody. I'm Yoki, Associate Professor of System Design Graduate School of System Design Management. And as Kay introduced me, but uh, I am involved and currently involved and uh, as a very early phase of this KOH program since last year, I have been invo involved in this program. And also I as Kay introduced me, but I visited several countries since last January. Maybe I visited three countries and five times or six times to visit there during uh, six months at the first half year of 2015. So this is why I am here to present the general description of our KOH program and also our intention or somehow, somehow outcome regarding last year's activities. And at the beginning of afternoon session, I would like to introduce each country's uh, situation or result very briefly. So after my presentation, Kane and other faculty members from Asian country will explain their own situation very detailed. So my presentation is very general or somehow introductory uh, contents. So my presentation, the title is the design validation and global ecosystem development. This is really very hard or difficult. And among this, uh, the word validation is most important or difficult word. How to validate is very, very difficult to do. So every time this kind of activity we do, everybody asks how to validate, how to validate the course for global entrepreneurship or for global innovatorship. So the, we have designed somehow and we conducted the first year activity, but it is extremely difficult to validate. Our prompt was correct or not, appropriate or not, or our result is sufficient or not. So the how to validate is a very important issue. And not just our faculty side and you as a participant side. We can't prove the validation or we can't validate our activities. So this is why we would like to introduce our course to foreign countries and anybody else will evaluate our activities. So this is why one of the reasons why we visited several countries in Asia is somehow the validation activity. But not only this kind of the, the other person's evaluation, but most important validation is of course 
you participant or you alumni will become great entrepreneur or great innovator. This is a top level final validation. So please don't forget this point. But anyway, we would like to uh, clarify how to validate our course and also how to develop global ecosystem. So unfortunately, I don't have clear answer at this moment. Now I am trying to find how to validate or how to develop. But throughout today's afternoon session, maybe that each presentation from each university or organization and also the panel discussion, through the panel discussion. But somehow we would like to clarify how to validate or how to develop these kinds of activities. So, based on this kind of philosophy, this is leader today's agenda. The first, I would like to explain the KOH program very general. Of course, in the morning session, Shiransaka Sensei or Ikeda Sensei explained about our KOH program or KOH very general description. But I would like to ex explain again very, very briefly. And after that, I would like to introduce the last year's activities with KO SDM H program in 2014. Some, somehow to summarize of the activities. So the first part should be our innovative thinking workshop in Asian countries and also the discussion with the faculty members of several leading universities in Asia. And the third part, last part, is possible collaboration with Asian countries. But this is just my idea, or somehow our KO, SDM idea. So throughout afternoon discussion, we would like to clarify and uh, we would like to reach to somehow the conclusions how to collaborate with Asian leading universities. So the first part is KOH program in general. So remember the KO, uh, remember the H is the abbreviation of enhancing development of global entrepreneur. So the Japanese loves the word global. <laughs> Very much favorite word. Everybody uses global. But there are, uh, I don't think this is a clear definition global. It is very difficult to define what is global, what is not global. But anyway, we usually use global. Okay? And sometimes the people tend to think that global means work together with foreigners, or visit foreign countries, or invite foreigners, and listen to his words. This is a very superficial attitude regarding global, I think. But our KOH program is slightly different. So we believe that not just listen to the words, but not just visit and take pictures, <laughs> but not just work together, but much more close relationship or somehow intimate relationship should be necessary between our Japanese side and the other countries' foreign side. And also, we are focusing to Asian countries because the design thinking or entrepreneurship is basically born in the United States or European countries first. And most organizations or most universities like to visit such place and learn, learn, listen, listen, and take pictures, everything. So, we, KOH program, would like to visit and work together, and also somehow we will provide something to them, and also we would like to learn from their side. So, this uh, bi directional relationship is very important as a world global. 
So the H G is global, but somehow our definition is still exists. And the purpose of the H program is like this. And the important word is the activity sustainable. So the of course the government budget is uh, always limited for one year or sometimes two or three years. So not long lasting of government budget. So the through this government funded program, of course the budget is limited just three years, starting from last year and this year. And the next year the government budget will end. So after that, we would like to continue to work or continue to do something. We would like to, uh, we should consider how to make these activities sustainable. And also, for sustainability, it is very important to establish ecosystem. Innovation ecosystem establishment is extremely important for us. So the purpose of H is like this, but the word sustainable and establishing ecosystem is really important. And on this chart, this is a description of our KOH program. So there are so many words, but the keyword is, so we are providing innovative thinking approach, not the word innovation. So innovative and innovation is clearly different means. And maybe the Kane will explain later the definition of what difference between innovation and innovative. But not just innovation, but innovative thinking approach is really important to think. And also the coursework is structured combination of design thinking, system thinking, and business synthesis thinking. These are the three pillars of our program. And design thinking, system thinking, business synthesis thinking is also our graduate school of SDM. There are very important pillars for our graduate school. So the coursework is uh, very uh, similar to our course and KOH program. And also the mindset is we are very much uh, concentrating to enhance. So the just delivering the tool or methodology is not enough, we think. So the mindset and truth should be combined properly is a primary part of our program. And also the PBL is also explained in the morning session by Ikeda Sensei. But again, we would like to enhance, uh, emphasize the pressure on new value proposition and its implementation. There are our KOH program keyword. And our program should be sustainable. So how to do this? This is an image of long-term perspective of our KOH program. The last year was the first year of this H program. And there are several domestic, just domestic participants. Not just limited to Japanese, but there were, there were several foreigners but all of them uh, live in Japan. So, we usually say the domestic participants. So, that maybe around 40 or 45 participants live, living in Japan participate first year. And then the participant introduce the excitement of first year's KOH to his friend and recruit the friend and second year their friend will participate and also the first year participant will become 
somehow mental so that they visit our class again and uh, as a mentor they will assist us and also starting from this year not so much but maybe around uh, five or ten participants from overseas participate this year's program and then the friend of friend will recruit the new guys or new person and also the participants from overseas will recruit their friends and next year they will participate okay and the first year participant will become mentor or sometimes instructor or we have some expectation but he or she would become angels with enormous money to deliver <laughs> for the very good ideas or good business so this kind of relationship is gradually enhanced so that the KOH ecosystem will be generated and the government budget will end in 2016 but we again we should be sustainable so again and again and again the fourth year fifth year sixth year or later on we should continue to maintain this kinds of ecosystem it's very important so again the long-term perspective means many participants or friends or friend of friends will come together to make long-lasting and close relationship among KOH alumni and also not just alumni but faculty members is very important player or actor of this ecosystem so in this room all of you are somehow the participants or alumni or faculty members so you are all of you are the member of this ecosystem so please do not forget you should become great entrepreneur great innovator so that our program should be validated so please work hard and get money as much as possible <laughs> so now the KOH last year's activity very brief result so we have conducted the five-day intensive course maybe the participant was around 40 members and also after that three months project based learning maybe the participant was around 20 and after that we visited several countries in Asia and hosted innovative thinking workshop to demonstrate our program in Asian countries so we visited four Asian countries such as India, Indonesia, Thailand, and Malaysia and five universities and one organization and during those uh, visits we discussed with uh, faculty members of each university and organization so purpose of our visit to Asian countries I explained briefly, but at the first to introduce our activity regarding KOH program. So the not just domestic participant, but participant in Asian countries will evaluate what is delivered through our program. And to visit, and uh, I we hosted our innovative thinking workshop and also uh, to develop relationship between several leading university or organization in Asia or in these four countries regarding innovation education so innovation education is uh, very difficult to deliver because uh, just the tool set or methodology is easy to 
educate or train, but uh, the total enhancement is very difficult. So I would like to discuss, or I would like to learn from several universities in Asia so that uh, we can deliver a very good education course in Keio University. And also the last part is that we hosted innovative thinking workshop, but among the participants in the workshop, we would like to recruit some people, very or most brilliant people, to invite one person from the participants from, from each country to join our KOH program. So I will introduce later, but in this room there are four students from each country. So each of them we are we selected very carefully the most brilliant guys or ladies come to here. So here is our first visit to Indonesia in January, last January. And he is the dean of the university. Here is our faculty member and ITB is the uh, Institute of Technology of London. So the Professor Akbar is sitting there and also Mr. Elranga is sitting where? Yeah, here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> and all of the participants of workshop like this. And also I visited second time. And also we did the workshop. The first one is just two hour workshop. And next, uh, the second time is uh, two days workshop. So we visited the Bandung Institute of Technology in the first and second, and uh, having discussion with the faculty members, including Professor Akuba, and we invited Mr. El Langa here. And the next country is Thailand. The first visit in last January, and uh, Professor Primer, and also the, uh, Mr. Variti attended our workshop and there are several participants for the two-hour workshop. And the second visit to Thailand in March, we had a two-day workshop and so many participants, and among so many participants, I selected to, to be invited as a Miss Tanipan. So the usual co-founder, thank you for coming. And in Thailand, we visited several universities, Tamasat University and Trarongkong Universities, and also the TCDC is a Thai Creative Design Center, Thailand Creative Design Center. So we met many faculty members of managerial, managerial area person to discuss how to do this kind of education. And the third place, is India. So he's a dean, and uh, Professor Anai is here, and also Aishani. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> and all the participants is like this. And the last place is visit to Malaysia in May, last May. And we did also the uh, workshop in the Malaya University, and there are the participants. And Nazia, where? Thank you for coming. She was one of the <coughs> participants during the workshop. So the University of Malaya, and Ms. Nazia comes to Japan to attend this workshop. So, these are the, the brief uh, situation or result of our Asian campaign or Asian visit for four countries. 
So the last part is possible collaboration with Asian countries. First of all, during these uh, several days, we have some very intensive meeting regarding how to collaborate between the Asian countries and us. Both are taken in this building several days ago. So we have very uh, intensive discussion among the faculty members from Asian countries. And also, we had the meeting with our dean, Professor Maino is the SDM dean, so we had the meeting. And also, the most important meeting is like this. <laughs> Discussion over drinking Japanese sake. This is very important. So, the, we have uh, established very close relationship between uh, these faculty members already. So, during today's afternoon session, maybe the discussion will be very positive and we can reach to, I hope, very expecting result. So the possible areas of collaboration should be like this, but this is just the idea, or somehow the, our KO side idea. So please discuss regarding this point. But we long intensive workshop hosted by KO University next week. And each university in Asia or each institute will take turns to become host of the day. So during a week long, but one day is Thailand day, one day is India day, or one day is Malaysia day, or one day is Indonesia day. So the faculty member from each country will deliver their education here in KO. And once you become the participant, you can learn from each country's very cutting edge course just in one single course. And each university or institute bring five to ten participants. But participants may be the university graduate school university students or other one, but many students will visit here and take lessons together. And after that, this can be hosted by different university or institute once in a year starting from 2017. These are the baseline of our just idea but possible areas of collaboration. So, these two are the questions I have shown at the beginning of my presentation. So how to validate and how to develop global ecosystem. Maybe somehow the discussion, through the discussion, this point will be touched. Okay, as a being of this afternoon session, I just summarize the KOH program and also the result of last year's activity and the possible areas of collaboration I have shown. So thank you for thank you very much for attention. So starting from now, Kane will make the meeting. Okay? Thank you very much.
So now I would like to host the presentations by Beijing University Zen Institute. And um, we will have six presentations, and starting from Gail, uh, because every other team members were very afraid what to talk. So I need to set the tone and bar really high <laughs> so that they can jump over me. So this will be our presentation. Um, unfortunately, we, we, we will not have um, some of the presentation, but we're going to cover a lot. So this will be the presentation order. Probably order should, doesn't really matter to you. So I will start my part. And all the presentation will be about um, I asked to make it 10 minute long, 10 minute long. So, and we're gonna have about five minute um, Q and A if possible. So this is my excuse. If it goes about 60 minutes, it's not my fault. It's their fault. I told them to make it 10. <laughs> okay. So let me start my 10 minutes. So I would like to talk about the KOH program in a little more detail about this year design. And I would like to talk about the recipe for our design. And but still we suffer the pain points. So this is a, basically the format for all of the other um, university and institute. So we're gonna talk about our programs, their programs, um, different that's okay different type of programs they, we provide for innovation or innovatorship education or entrepreneurial education. And it comes in different <coughs> styles, so you'll probably like that already. But we'll be very honest and open today that yes, we do have some pain points. Because I know this is a very difficult type of education we need to go, because it's not like math, it's not like physics, it's not we do memorizing equation and you know uh, calculating the right numbers. It's about just like um, Yoki Sensei just mentioned. It's about mindset and tool set, and it's about everything else. So it's very difficult. So we kind of give a format of we talk about our program first, and then the pain points, and something we try to fight the pain points. So so that will be our format. And I'm starting my part. So I will talk about the KOH program, and I, I'm pretty sure you have heard a lot about it already from Seiko and Makoto. So I will just dive into the little details, a little bit about details of our program, because I, now I see a lot of the participants of the program, but I see other visitors as well. So this is what we are doing right now, currently ongoing. So the program for 2015 is uh, we have this intensive workshop. It's very intensive. <laughs> those who are attending, you know what I meant, intensive, right? But those who are not attending, it's very intensive. It starts at 9.30, it goes until midnight. No, well, you feel like it's a midnight, but it's still, it goes until 6.30. So it's really a whole day long workshop, and it's not just listening. Well, there's a lot of listening, but there's a lot of doing things. So, you know, actually applying what you just learned. So it's very intensive. And we're right in the middle of this intensive workshop. And there will be a project work following. And I'm, I'm going to tell you why we made this structure and why we think this is, um, this is the better structure to to teach, to teach or give up experience of entrepreneur, entrepreneurship and innovatorship. So, as Yoki Sensei mentioned, this is the definition we follow for our program. So we like to, you know, use the same definition within the within the team or within the team, the groups of people that's in the room because. Otherwise, you'll end up talking about very different things under one same concept, concept or the same topic. So we like to, you know, give a common language to start the project or to start the program. So innovation, we use this um, definition. So we try to follow this definition from the book, uh, Managing Innovation. It's a process of turning opportunity into new ideas, 
and of putting these into widely used practice. And here is a dictionary definition for entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, blah, blah, blah. And this is from Chimpadar, that the person with entrepreneurship is a greatly valued self-reliance, and such and such. So this is where we start, but we also add our focus and our own definition, our own flavor, so to say, so that we have a little more good understanding of the words that we use. So we do not focus on, I need to be honest, we do not focus on innovation in the program because we consider innovation happens after someone tried and innovation can only be identified retrospectively, meaning from the future, looking back into the past, that's the only time you can identify, oh, that was an innovation. But, however, you can work towards the innovation by thinking innovatively, thinking innovatively, and then turning the opportunity into new ideas. That we can, you know, put the pedal and then push really hard. So that's how we think of, that should be our one of our focus, that's innovative. And we do not focus on entrepreneurs, so it's not necessarily a startup CEO, but we focus on the spirit or the mindset of entrepreneur. So entrepreneurship in our sense is a mindset and the spirit of the entrepreneurs. So these are the two focuses we make in our program. And this is our flavor, so we even give more explanation. You may think this is a lot and it may be demanding, but it's, it's kind of necessary. And we, or we are open to discuss, and we are open to people who disagree. But at least we can start talking about this. So this is our flavor. So innovativeness or innovative is thinking outside of the box. And again, this, is, this was shown by Seiko in the morning. A new solution, not just a new solution, but the new value, okay? So we are trying to, you know, say no to, it's not innovative technology. It's not innovative marketing. They are important, of course, but it's not the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is innovative value creation. So that's the flavor we all share with our participants. And this is also from the slide that I showed in the, the workshop about entrepreneurship in our flavor is it's always about I, so it's a sense of ownership, and then it's about thinking, doing, feeling all the time, and to communicate. So these are the flavors I give and I share with the participants. I think this is one of the strategies that we take when we do when we execute our program. We try to have the same protocol or same language that we speak with participants and us. So that's very important. That's a, a one technique that we kind of developed since uh, we started doing something like this. And again, this is the same, um, this, this is a slide that I take from the, the actual workshop. I try to visualize what we're thinking. So yes, we focus on innovative and we focus on entrepreneurship, but on top of it, we talk about new value creation. This is another technique that we take. We try to, you know, communicate in a very uh, clear way. So how we think and what we're aiming, so that all the participants can understand what we're trying to, you know, communicate, what we're trying to say. And again, this is our um, schedule and. I would like to talk about our secret recipe for our program design. And I haven't told this to my participants, but um, I have shown them this picture of um, schedule and also the picture next to this. Uh, so this is a part of my secret, our secret recipe. The secret re recipe is already is shown to you. It's this red lines. This is one of our secret recipes. So no matter how we design our program, no matter how we do our program, it's all about participants. That's how we think. 
We have been doing this since 2012, and we have been having hard time sometimes just finding participants. We have been hard time finding good participants. It was very difficult over a year. But now we came to somewhat the conclusion that we should really find a good person to start with. So that was a first year student or the first year participant. We asked for recommendations for next years. And then it seems to be working very well. It seems to be working very well. So this is one of the very um, important recipes that we follow that we try to pick the right group of people in the very first place and then ask them to introduce their friends that who might be interested in this and who might be good in this program. So this is very important. And then now it's I, because I, I'm telling you, uh, because I see a lot of my participants, I want your friend to come. And I know you know that which friend of yours should come, right? So that's one of our recipes. And here's our second secret recipe. And I'm pretty sure all of you, including my participants and maybe um, the fellow um, friends from Asia have seen this, but I'm going to show you the, the back end of the recipe. So this is the recipe that we were thinking. So these are the things that we really want um, to communicate in each day. So this is the seven days described in a one word, and this is adding a little more, um, little more description to that. So the first day is a kickoff in innovative thinking. We spend so much time talking about innovativeness. What is it? And are you, can you be aware of innovativeness? And also new values, new value creation. We spend so much time. If you haven't, you weren't in the uh, workshop, you probably can imagine, but we spent hours and hours talking about just this. It, because we think this is the key. I'll show you how. So the second day, it's the design thinking. It's about human-centered insight. And why human-centered insight is important? <coughs> it's because to come up with innovative ideas and to create new values. And the third day, it's a system thinking, and it's multiple viewpoints to design as a system. Then it, of course, aims to innovativeness in different viewpoints. And it, it of course, aims to the new value creation. And a lot of human insights will feed into the multiple viewpoints of a system thinking. And the fourth day, we will be talking about prototyping and testing. And it is to find the true value. And of course, it is to create a new value. And all the findings of human-centered in insight will feed into the prototype and testing. And of course, multiple viewpoints and the, the descriptions or the drawings you draw from a multiple viewpoint help you to create the prototype or to test the prototype. And on the sixth day, yeah, I'm skipping the, the third day, but it's the fifth day and sixth day, it's about realizing and managing the value chain. And of course, everything that we've done, covered, will be feeded in here because that's what, you want, what we want to design as a business. And of course, it's all about innovativeness and it's all about new value creation. So this is how these are connected to each other. And of course, it's not only the one way road. So that's why we have this seventh day at the bottom, right there. Nonlinear and iterative. That's what we need to cover. So this can go around and around. But the only way we can teach this is in a linear way. Otherwise, it's going to be very chaotic and it's very difficult to follow. So this is the secret recipe that we follow. Okay, but there are pain points. So two pain points that we're still trying to fight is, so in the project-based learning, so it, th those seven days were here. In the project-based learning, when we start project with um, teams of four people, this, everything has to always be in mind and practice of everybody. 
who's in the project-based learning. And it's difficult. It's very difficult because all the participants tend to fall into one very specific um, area. So what we really try hard is to try to remind them, remind them what they've done here and try to use that while they're running their project. But this has been very difficult, very difficult, because a lot of feedback, a lot of support. But that's the, one of the pain points. And the second one is already talked by uh, Professor Yoki, that validation of the program takes a long time. It can take a long time, because the, the true validation is only possible when we have very successful innovator or very successful entrepreneur among our alumni, or maybe one of our faculty members or so. So, but we started this validation process by showing to our fellow friends in Asia who are very well educated in the, in the, in the latest design thinking methodologies and latest system thinking methodologies and maybe practices in the field. So, this is, we're, we're trying different things. So, for the first pain point, we are giving a lot of feedback. So, many touch points between us faculty members and the teams that's running the project. So that's our countermeasure that we're trying right now. But it's very time consuming. It's resourceful because we always get email at, I don't know, two o'clock in the morning. Or you know, you can get an email like, a bit, like very late at night. You can get called up uh, very late at night. So, but I think it's, it's worth it. And I, I, I see that that's the only way so far to remind them about the whole important aspect that we covered. And for the second part, um, so the other, another counter measure that we try is that we keep in touch with our alumni. We try to keep in touch, we invite them to our social gathering, we invite them, you know, just over a drink or dinner, and I, I'm really happy to see some of my um, alumni today, so that's what we do. So this is the end of my presentation that we, I've talked about the secret recipe and some of the pain points that we still struggle and we st still try to fight. All right? Okay, now I'm gonna take maybe one or two questions if you have. Yes. Actually, I would like to ask you, um, why do you work only with um, Asian countries? Why not Europe and further? Very good question. Well, from a business point of view, you know, in, in general, Asia is a market. That's what we thought. Okay? Because of the GDP climbing up, because of the population climbing up. So that is a very simple reason. Another reason is, is closer. I mean, we can travel easier. So, yes, we need to admit we're like super busy. And of course, um, Europe and the US and many other countries have the best schools. But we, you know, we kind of made a choice that, okay, because of this business opportunity we see in the near future, it might be a very good um, opportunity to, you know, be closer to this market, so to say. Because we're talking about entrepreneurship, it, it, we thought it's nice to be, you know, get in touch with the huge market potentials. So that's one thing we saw. And then another thing is that um, it's closer, closer in distance and closer in um, culture as well. So because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to spend many time on uh, many minutes on this. But when you, when we talk about like human-centered design and things like this, you're culture really gets in the way sometimes, or it really affects how you see things. And so we thought the Asian fellows can share a lot more than we can share with the European people. But we're not saying we will not try that with the other, you know, very far culture people. But once we understand how we're different in a very neat, similar cultures, maybe we'll be able to talk in a better or efficiently with you know with many different cultures because you know the things done in California cannot be transferred into Tokyo right away. We've learned that over years. 
So we thought, how, you know, maybe it's better we start from the Asian fellows and understand, that, you know, what are the contextual changes that we need to be aware of? What are the things that we should be careful about when we're just trying to adopt things from, you know, for example, California? So that was our discussion. We had this discussion over here, and we carefully decided the Asian countries for that reason. Thank you. Thanks for asking. That's a, a great question. Yes? Maybe this is the last question that I'd like to leave some time for my fellows. Okay. Yes. Um, regarding recruiting new participants mm -hmm. for the next program, um, I have two types of people in my mind. Yes. One is the people like me who will be uh, good good participants, yes. and the other one is the um, bottleneck in the organization when we try to um, <laughs> spread uh, this innovative thinking. I when, see. <laughs> what do you think about that? that Ooh, that's a very good question. So what he said is that he, ha he has two kind of person that's really good in the pro program, and the other kind is that the people that he really wants to be changed, right? Wow, that's tough. Of course, we prefer the first guy. <laughs> and uh, yes, but I don't know. That's a, that's a, I don't know. Maybe that's, that'll be a good question to ask to the all the participating universities because they're probably willing to answer that question. So please, somebody take a note on that. And if we have a time, we'll get back to you. I prefer the first guy. Okay. All right. So, okay, that will conclude my um, part of the presentation. Thank you so much, and um, I will talk to you later. So, so the next person is uh, Akwa Khan. Are you ready? Yes.
to small, like say, thank you very much for all your friends already inviting us, and we we are from Indonesia. It's me and one student, Evan. Thank you very much for the opportunity to come here. So today I would like to share you about the entrepreneurship education in my institution, the Institute of Technology, Bandung. Uh, my name is Akbar Aditama. Uh, I have uh, many type of education background. So like Ken said, we have to change the book. So I have changed the book many times. <laughs> my base from architecture engineering and then out of the book to electrical engineering and I changed again to my second master in MBA. Finally, I work in management of technology, in Shibaura Institute of Technology. So Japan already my second home. So uh, this is the content I would like to introduce first about my institution and then enter to the program starting from the competency, learning method, business cycle, challenge, and positive side and lesson learned. And this is uh, my institution, Institute of Technology Bandung. Uh, this is one of the oldest Institute of Technology in Indonesia, established in 1920 during the Dutch era. When Japan entered to Indonesia, the name became Bandung Rodeo Daigaku. And then after we independent in 1945, it became second uh, university. And the one is School of Business and Management. We are the youngest surrounded by engineering faculty. And so we look like an alien because we are the ones uh, School of Business in here. Um, and then uh, why we need the entrepreneurship program is we in Indonesia, we produce many students graduated from university, but because the economy began to slow down and then we have people, the company reduced the employees also become crowded and there's, there's so many jobless and there's a high gap between rich and poor and so we have to fill the gap so that this uh, we think that the entrepreneurship program is important and uh, we are from school of business and management we have uh, bachelor degree two types first degree is bachelor management produce major and second one uh, bachelor of entrepreneurship we focus to the entrepreneur and also master degree, MBA, and master of science. MBA to produce manager, but in here master science to create scientists related with the business management, and the last is doctor science management. And this is the process. We have three years uh, program. The first year we focus on the developing the soft skill for the student. This is for bachelor entrepreneurship, and then the second year we. The student have to launch their business, and the third year they must be the business must be done, and then after that they have a graduation. And this is the learning method about the material learning. We teach business system modeling, business simulations, you know, business computing, and everything. And and then the others is experience like a mentorship, business trip, entrepreneurial interview, and then business incubation. And this is the life cycle, uh, starting from the semester, third semester, we also teach design thinking to create the idea of the business. And then semester four, this must be soft launching of the business, starting from creating business model. Fifth semester, the grand launching, the business plan. Sixth semester, this initiation, so they have to create uh, the partnership between vendors, supplier, many things. And semester uh, seven, managing the startup. So the student have to get the profit from their business. In the end of the eighth semester, they have to think how to develop their business. And the challenge, uh, Kay asked me to, to share what, what is the pain, but I think this is a challenge. Well, from the student side, uh, this, this campus actually is not located in Bandung, the main city, but in, the campus is located outside the city in Jatinangor. So the problem is it took one and a half hour uh, normally, but because, because this is developing country, sometimes there is high traffic jam, so it will increase. So the, sometimes the student complain about this kind of situation. They have to connect with the suppliers, the supplier located in the main city, and, and they have to return again to the campus. And then uh, because they have to run the business, uh, so many students have a different capability. Some students already prepare before they enter the university to create the business. Some, some students still try to find what is the focus in the, in the business. And then they also, because we are surrounded by 
engineering. So sometimes there's some pressure from other engineering faculty. Why the business is not technological? You know, you know ITV, why the business is only culinary, fashion, like so that's the kind of pressure for us. Um, but our students that have capability to produce, because we are business school, we don't produce anything. And then uh, we need collaboration with engineering students. The problem when the student came to the engineering university or no, engineering student, and this, the engineering student feel not confident with their product because it's still prototype. But our students will say, okay, this is a very good opportunity to have uh, to create the business that the engineering student doesn't understand. So they say, no, 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 we, we don't confident with our product. So that's what happen. So there's no collaboration at all. And then for the lecture side, we sometimes we invited the guest lecturer to come because if the location outside uh, Bandung, the main city, most uh, invited lecturers say, oh, I know, uh, I'm sorry, I cannot come like that. And then the mentorship. Sometimes the connection comes from the senior businessman. So for us as a lecturer, we get the knowledge to hear them as a senior. But for the student, they think, why? What was it? I don't understand. So the gap of age is really important to, to look to be a mentorship. And then we also need uh, funding for a startup company. And for the development for next, we uh, prepare for the international student exchange program. And we have to create business community development. And we have one to enter social entrepreneurship program. So we teach the student not only to get you know, the profit, but think about how is, you can develop your uh, environment, the social environment, and everything. And then we try to uh, get the funding from investor, venture bank, and, and, and others. And this is what we learn uh, to create this kind of program. Actually, for create an advocacy, we have, we should, the student have, uh, should have this, some characteristic like uh, creativity, risk taker, survival, and then internal locus control to focus the aim to the business. But in here in Indonesia, the student usually it's come from low economic income to have struggle, creativity, risk taker, but the market say different. Most of the students come from middle income, so they will be happy. So just study and try to create uh, the business. They don't have, you know, like high dream like that. So, so that's the fact. And then uh, we think that these hunters should be uh, created before enter the university. So. After they enter the university, they should be a, have an idea about the business. So we just shape. We not create it, we just shape and develop. That's important in university. And the, we have to select the student based on the character. And so this is the positive side. This is the first stage right now, or in the, the second year, uh, the third year. And this is the business type. So mostly about the culinary and then fashion, so spa, like so it was like that, the business. And so we try to open course for engineering students. So we also try to, to be open. And this is the business type, mostly about application. And for the first one is about how the application to know when the bus is uh, on time. And the other type is WeChat. This is uh, crowdfunding for person who want to donate for the school because school in Indonesia sometimes uh, you know it's not, not in good condition sometimes broken so it's really dangerous for, for the student so we create this kind of the student create this kind of application and finally the student uh, already feel confidence already came to the international conference joined the national competitions and we already already have a student exchange program with Japanese students from this American university, so they came to our university about one semester. So, and also we create business incubator. We create it in Bandung and also Jatinam also students. We can try to reduce the complaint from the student mobility from big city to small area. So, I think that's, that's all. Thank you very much. Don't worry, it was nice. It was nice. Any questions from the audience? Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, 
I'm from Colombia, and this is similar case to where I, when I was living there. The situation of entrepreneurs and the situation of how to deal with innovation and how to introduce innovation. So now that I'm not there, the question is, have you ever tried to work with designers? Not engineers, nor business people, but designers. Well, for we only try to bring designer to student, but the problem, this student is business school. Sometimes they don't, they don't know the designer, <laughs> so so they when we uh, already happy to be oh, this designer very famous, and then we try to bring him as a guest lecturer, but the students he don't understand. Who is it? Okay, <laughs> so, so, so there's a lack of information because we are. We are not from designers, so the knowledge only focuses on business and management. But, but we already tried to bring designer. Because what, what I saw from the, from the results is that when you give entrepreneurs ideas or entrepreneurs tools to engineers, they come up with apps or they come up with something that is like between their technical background. If you give uh, entrepreneurship uh, tools to marketers or to business people, what they come up with is with a really nice pitch and a really nice way to sell something. But from my experience, when you give entrepreneurship to designers, in most of the cases, after coming to, oh, I want to become famous and this, this thing that is a problem, is how to be human, how to be more human, how to be, like, how to deal with these problems that can be can be solved in, 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 in the in the community. So probably I, I will I will I, I will question the idea of putting some design like local design or more like a design that is more familiar with the situation to work with with engineers and with the, the management that you're dealing with. Yes. That would be interesting. Yes. Okay we will think thank you very much. And and finally, it's right now the, the design faculty asked us to create design management. So they become more aggressive than us to know about management. So that's, that's the situation. Because when you have this kind of uh, context, like, I mean, there are people coming to the school from low income, medium income, high income. That means that there are so many uh, uh, gaps, and that means that there are so many problems to solve. That means that there are so many opportunities for designers, for engineers, and for marketers, and the product is going to be bigger if they three work together. So that's that, that's an opportunity that you guys have. Thank you. If you have one more question. Because uh, it's a 600 years old city. 
600 years old city. Uh, and uh, it, is, it is already uh, in contention to be nominated as a UNESCO World Heritage City. Uh, it, is a, it is a city which has traditionally been a place where the entrepreneurs have been richer than the kings of the place. <laughs> traditionally. Uh, there has been cases where uh, Changiz Khan uh, tried to invade our city and the rich associates of the city get to got together and said how much money do you think you will be able to get by invading my city and I said this, take the money get up and, and this is a fact, this is a history of America okay? and uh, the people who, who donated that money at that point of time are known as Nagar Sheikhs, the rich guys of city uh, and I'm, I'm talking about this, so basically it's a city of entrepreneurs so if there is a cab driver in Ahmedabad, he either owns his own cab and runs it as a new business or dreams about it. That's, that's how, so I just wanted to put things into the right context. And I'm yet to find a city or a place where I don't find Gujaratis. I found here as well. So, I mean, not with me, we are, we are everywhere. Yeah, and we are, we are usually in business patterns. So that's why I'm saying I'm a typical case of my city. Okay, so as I mentioned, there, are, there is about the entrepreneurs of Ahmedabad and being so, uh, saving the city many times. One of those entrepreneurs, two of those entrepreneurs are over here, Kasturbin Lalbi and Ganesh Mahalengar. Uh, these guys practically bought 60% of the new city, new developing city that is right now. 60% of the land just to propagate education in the sector. Okay, with a very noble intention to propagate education. And they, are, they had a true community initiatives by, by the people who fought the independence movement. Yes, Ahmedabad has been the, the battleground or the home place for Mahatma Gandhi and various other people. So it has a very large historical background. But these guys were actually motivated by the same set of people. And some of the leading uh, institutions of design, institutions of technology, institutions of research in India are directly indirectly either supported or land donated or propagated by the people who have, you know, who are the founders behind our university. So, cases like Atira, Physical Research Laboratory, National Institute of Design, I am Ahmedabad, Gujarat University, SEP University, and of course Ahmedabad University are all basically babies of Ahmedabad Education Society. Okay, so, so point here and there, basically we are an entrepreneurial city. And because this, the university is named after the city, it's an entrepreneurial university. Okay? So anything and everything we do, we have a technology school, but they still they do also talk about entrepreneurship. There is, a college, there is a college of computer sciences that also talks about entrepreneurship. That's the basic theme of the entire university. Very young. Uh, as I mentioned, the society is 1935, pretty old, but our university is just baby, 2009. We have six faculties, two centers, and more than 3,500 students. So the institutions in the university are decades older than the university. Okay, so that's that's the typical case. And uh, very proudly, but very humbly, it's it's we have a very funny way of doing things. We start a PhD program first, and then start a bachelor's program. It's usually the other way around, but that's <laughs> that's how our university has been functioning. Okay, so. Uh, there are three major courses which are related to entrepreneurship uh, which are meant for our set of domain specific areas. So as I mentioned there are second generation, third generation entrepreneurs in the city, in this entire area, not just the city. If you look at the rest of India including Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, there is a very large set of people who are second generation, third generation entrepreneurs. And there is, this is the institution which basically tries to address their needs. Uh, now, these are the people who already are living under a big shack. You know, they're, 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 they're seen as they've already made a career. They are already business leaders and business barons and they are somebody who is just trying to make themselves, prove themselves in front of the big guys, the big fathers of the industry. So this is a program which is meant specifically for them. Yes, it is entrepreneurship. Yes, it is required for them to learn, understand, have an appetite for the risk. They are well off. When I say well off, I mean really well off. But they need to learn that they might fail, like every other entrepreneur fails. And they are, they are basically trained for that dark, bad day. But how to fall in a stand up. So the program is designed with three hours that is rigor, it's very rigorous. There is relevance, because there are people 
it's, it's kind of a consultancy because they are, they are basically, uh, my, when I was a small kid around five years age, I used to go to my office. And uh, I used to read Chapman series, which is manufacturing processes when many of my friend, when friends were reading hardy works. So that's, that's how it is. So they, they know their subject very well. So it's near consultancy that we go over this. So there is a rigor, there is a relevance because they need to be handheld about their problems, their businesses, their understandings, which would be solutions for them. Third is relationship. Uh, as, as people rightly pointed out, that there are people inside an organization who are not that creative. Imagine that non-creative person being your father. Now, um, from, for putting things in the context, your father and your boss, so you, you cannot, you can at least, if you're your boss, and you, when you go home, you're away. <laughs> but in our case, he's there at home as well. So, <laughs> so, so it's, you, if, if you really push creativity, or push innovative thinking, push to get into new ideas, is a difficult task. How to do that, how to put in that, is what we try to train our students for. Uh, so how do we do, and of course, apathy. These guys are brats. Rich kids who have never seen failures or who have never seen difficulties in their life. So that is why we, we have designed the program with something which is known as Project Oliver, which we very try to create apathy. Well, uh, again, there is one more thing I want to share with you. India, yes, it has power cuts. Yes, it has poverty. But that's not India. No. It is the third largest GDP, the uh, third largest economy in the world as far as GDP is concerned. And one of the fastest growing economies in India, in the world. So there are, there is a divide, big divide. Uh, haves and have nots, and, but the haves are more. It's, it's a country which 87% of the population below the age of 54, 87, and we are 130 billion, <laughs> right? So it's a big number, okay? So uh, Project Gulliver basically tries to take these people and take them to smaller areas uh, where there is poverty there are problems and make them sensitize with these problems so that they are ready for their situations in their lives when they want them. We've got forbid but if they get in that situation. They need to have that help. They need to have that understanding. Second, uh, business management is one and family management and family business management is different. How to talk to your peers, how to talk to your siblings, how to talk to your uh, seniors. I think in this class, when we have all Asians, mostly you'll be able to understand this 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 situation of that peer pressure, which which is so common in India at least. When you're talking to your seniors, your father, you have to pay some certain amount of respect, but at the same time make them understand that you know it's time to move. Right? So that's that's what we try to uh, creativity and innovation is a very important part of the business. There are tools and workshops, and there is there is new product development. These are some of the Important subjects apart from the conventional management subjects that are there. Uh, for those set of people who are who do not have a family business background, but again they are interested in their businesses, there is a center for innovative business design. That's in collaboration with Stanford Design University, Stanford Design School. It's an incubation center where anybody can come in, participate uh, with by paying a very small amount of uh, fees, and they all their office expenses, a lot of things are being supported by the by the institution. We have funds as well. So, uh, so these are some of the ventures that are present over there. Truck spot over here was eventually sold for four million dollars, and then again sold to forty million dollars, and it is owned by Intel right now. So that's a product of our uh, university. Uh, third one is very interesting. I am not try to explain the entire thing, but the concept is very interesting. Now, as I mentioned, it's a six hundred year old city, and we have a lot of heritage, which is going to the drains. So we are trying to create entrepreneurial opportunities so as we are able to save and keep our heritage with us for a long period of time. And we are doing it by bringing technology in, by use of technology for implementation and for conservation of our heritage. Because that's, that's the heart of our, our, own, our own race, so to say. So this is a very important center that we have just really initially developed for this specific purpose. It's entrepreneurial, it's technology, but with a base of heritage. Uh, of course, there is project based learnings, and I, I am running out of time, but I just explain you one of these. So, making bread is one of the oldest technology, so to say, known to man, right? And if if I talk to Kay and that and my students are working on it, they'll say, nah, <laughs> this is not a place to work on. But then, uh, 
as a part of the course, they studied the entire value chain of making bread. Why we so how do we how do we pro, how do we give them objective? We said you do whatever you want to <coughs> make a 200 hour video of anything in the world. So one of the groups made a 200 hour video of making bread. And we had our own fears, but we, we still let them do it. This mold, which is still not used anywhere in the world, is able to have 37% saving on wastage while making bread. And there is no technology behind it. It's a me too kind of an enterprise, but 37% saving is a big saving, any given day. Uh, and it's, it's a prototype, and which works, it has been tested. The second one happens to be, which is very, very clear, very near by baseball. Baseball is very common over here in India. Cricket is a religion, uh, which is more important than all other religions put together. Okay, so, uh, just like a baseball, uh, cricket needs to be practiced, and there is a specific place in the bat where you need to hit the ball to have the maximum distance. Probably the same thing in the baseball, right? Uh, so, there is this kid who was very confused what to make a video of. He made a video of 200 hours of just cricket. And you are laughing. Man, what are you doing? <laughs> but then out of that video of 200 hours, he found out, say, 20 minutes, where there are students who are practicing how to hit that specific, specific portion. And then he interacted with the coaches and said, why, why is this guy spending two hours a day for just getting the ball? He said, he's trying to practice to hit this area, which is marked over here. Now, this kid was not so smart, engineering student, he was not so smart. All he did was, Put a load sensor over there with a counter on the back and side, it's a patent over there. Because you are able to count how many times you are able to hit the center portion of the bat, and it's a practice bat which can really create value. Out of what? Just 200 hours of video. So, this is some of the things that we end up doing. Uh, this is another project of mine where the students were working with, uh, uh, with an NGO of disabled people, people who have uh, disability of hand and legs, and they make various products. So, they, my students, made a marketing plan, not only made but executed the marketing plan and handed over the how to execute the marketing plan to the students as a part of the subject. So this creates a, and, and there, is, there, is, there is very little, the theoretical aspect is given and then they are supposed to do, implement the theory as they want it. So this is it, the problems faced, well, they are, they are very similar across uh, ages and across uh, geography region, number one. So, Creating apathy for these haves, you know, people who are well fed throughout their lives, who have never seen problems, who have never seen poverty, is a big challenge. These guys are driving inside the institution, their Audis and BMWs, and for them to understand the problems of the person on the road is a very difficult task. That's a problem that we are trying, we are facing a lot of. We are executing a project deliver, uh, but then it's, it's a problem. Number one. Number two, uh, traditional businesses in India are 50 years old, 60 years old, 100 years old. And there is a way of doing things, which is good, which is tried and tested, which works. But I'm not sure if it will work, it will work for the next 50 years. We need to change. And make them understand, and more importantly than them, to make their higher-ups understand that there is a need for change is a big, big challenge that we are trying to face, which we are facing right now. Solution, we are inviting their parents to part participate in the workshops. Very can <laughs> We are asking the kids and their parents. So, how are we cannot invite them to come and attend the workshop, but we ask them to see and grade the work of their children. Because that business, we are not that clear about. Their parents are the best people to judge them. They know their business is well. Number one. Number two, they are able to appreciate the technology better. Right. So that's, that's how we are trying to put up, and there are workshops that we go on creating in business innovation here and there. Venture Studio, the second, uh, this second institution that I, I had talked about, well, uh, this is a problem with myself as well. You have a darling. You have that one idea which is, which uh, when, when he used to give the workshop that you find a very innovative idea, I think you would remember. Uh, so I had the idea and the solution both in my mind before we even practiced. And then you want to kill that darling to get a better solution. Right? And that's that's a task for me, myself, and the students who are interacting, who are working over there in which is to kill your darling, to get a better idea, to get to the next level. So that, that's a problem. And uh, I think second problem is also common among 
first of all, you need to have confidence to take criticism. And man, we criticize. Specifically for people from our area, we are not this humble. We never say thank you for asking a question. And we never say, we are never missed. So when somebody asks a question and we just make face. <laughs> so that's that's and 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 we ask tough questions. We are never we are never humble in that matter. So as a faculty, as students, students are also not this humble, so to say. We we really do each other out. So how to keep confidence while taking those questions? You know what? And still keep pursuing our dreams by taking those questions in a very positive, creative sense. Something which is a problem. I don't have a solution for that right now. Uh, heritage management. Uh, well, there are people who know some arts, who are artisans, and they, there is a need for them to learn new technology. There is a need for people for them to learn new arts and methods for propagating that technology, or for, for, for use of technology in propagating that heritage. So it's a difficult task for make them, for making them understand that there is a better way of doing while protecting your heritage. There are examples there are, but I'll not come to it. Making participants. So there is this big buzzword back home that we talk about regarding aggregation. Is it, is it present aggregation of uh, taxis, aggregation of taxi service, the Ola thing and aggregation of uh, market places, online market places, Flipkart. There is not a single guy who is aggregating heritage together. Putting all the heritage of a place on one platform. That is something which we are trying to do on your side to solve this problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the time. As Indian, we know what kind of mentality Gujaratis have, but okay, in, in a good way. <laughs> but like, as we talk about India, and when we go globally, even in the case of India, if you go in Maharashtra, people want to do just a government job, and if you go little bit north in Delhi and Punjab, business and government job, they are just like enjoying life, and then how you go? So, what you are doing for that to have to manage that diversity and still getting out that product? Because Gujarat is a small part, I, and still I, the big I, India is remaining. I know, I know it is remaining. But there are so many engineering colleges and so many institutions other, apart from Ahmedabad University was taking care of that problem. I, I was thinking about entrepreneurship and I know, innovation. I know, I know. There is innovation. So there are so many institutions, there are so many colleges, there are so many institutions out there who are taking care of those job wannabes, so to say, that we have to find our niche as a university. We have to find our space where there is nobody else offering that. And that was so, so very inherent to this institution. Right? So, if you do, if you want to take up a job, don't come to Ahmedabad University. We don't mind. <laughs> we already have enough students. So. <laughs> but then, if you really want to become an entrepreneur, in an innovative way, you're the best one. That's 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 the reason. Okay. All right. Thank you, and I. Okay. Let's take a. About 10 minute break. Take a 10 minute break and come back. We have uh, uh, three more to go. So well, let's let's say let's come back at let's say 15 minute break. Okay, let's come back at 45. Okay, 2:45 is about time to get me back. All right.